Alrighty, and we're live once again. Sorry about that. Just decided to uh, to redo the video because I didn't really like how I was stuttering and stammering and stuff at first. So, anyway, hi, Andy here, and welcome back once again at the Mecca de Nabo in uh, in Ohio. So yeah, I decided to just make it a live stream just because uh, you know I you know I didn't really have you know. Not not necessarily that I don't have the time, but it's just, you know, home life's not really doing so well at the moment. So I didn't want to sit down and edit something and then come out here and upload it and whatever. Um, plenty of time for uh, that sort of thing later. Um, which, yeah, some huge announcements on the horizon. Um, but we'll get into that in a separate video because I don't want to bog this video down with that announcement. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, today is vlog 300, and it's crazy to see, like, how far I've come on the YouTube platform in the time that I've been on it. You know, I've been, you know, on the YouTube platform since 2006, been making content since 2008 on a consistent basis. You know, in fact, it was, you know, just last month that I celebrated, you know, 10 years of actively making content, you know, with my own, uh, can equipment and stuff because uh, from you know 2006 2007 um it was basically just uploading either stuff my friends did or borrowing their equipment or whatever you know i didn't have my own equipment until 2008 that's when i got my very first camera um and that, i know i mentioned in earlier uh vlog live streams and stuff that uh we'd be doing a q a section but didn't really get a whole lot of cues to a so we're gonna have to uh trim that down a bit so we'll pretty much just go over um what i see that's different from like vlog one versus vlog 300 now and there's a lot of things man like when i first started making vlogs on youtube you know it was just such a new concept at the time you know and youtube itself was a new concept at the time you know it had only started what two three years after you know, I started to make my own stuff. So it was a very new platform and not a lot of people really knew what to make of it beyond just uploading just random ass clips of Family Guy and whatever the fuck else, you know. There wasn't, you know, the community was still fairly early at the time and people were just figuring it out and mostly just uploading either that stuff or just random home movies or skits or whatever else, you know, still in the beginning phases. Um, so, you know, when I first started doing it, I did it because I was inspired by a lot of those early J vloggers, you know, vlogging in Japan. I just really loved uh, seeing a country that was vastly different from my own here in America. And, you know, just connecting with the people behind the camera as well. I think that was, you know, the really important thing that's stuck with me all this time. And it's the reason I still continue to do YouTube, even after all this time, is the connection that I have with other creators, as well as you guys watching this right now. And it's the thing that's kept me going this time. And uh, at this point, um, I did to say that legacy also plays a big part in my motivation to to keep going on YouTube, you know, because I've been doing it for so long. If anything, it's a way for me to keep track of where I'm at in this present moment in time, and you know, to look back on this in a in a year or two or whatever, and be like, man, he he looked so weird back then. I can't believe he was stressing over that situation back then because it's not really going to mean much anything in two or three years anyway so and uh you know even for more you know even for like a darker reason you know like when i eventually die you know there's going to be an archive of stuff that's out there that people can look at and see oh that's that's what he did you know for better or worse <laughs> it's not all glamorous folks but uh you know, it's a way for me to just kind of establish my legacy. And it's, you know, going to be crazy to, to think that in 
couple decades from now, I'll be able to look back on these videos, even though they'll be all grainy and pixelated and gross because the resolution will be so ungodly high by then that a simple 1080p or 720 or whatever this is, you know, is going to be too grainy and gross looking. You know, it's like looking at old, you know, 240p videos now. It's just like, man, how was I able to even decipher what a lot of those things were? Because I was looking at an old Tokyo Kuni video, actually. Um, it was an old video of him and uh, his friend Ken going out and uh, doing like a, a comedy tour in Osaka. It was an old ass video from like 07 or something like that. And, you know, it was kind of hard for me to decipher what was all going on because it was so pixelated, you know, versus how it was back then. You know, it's just like, man, how did we... How do we get to this point where it's hard to even decipher what's all going on? But, uh, you know, it's just uh, the progress of of the platform. And, you know, for me, Vlog 1, you know, is very important because it was the beginning of this whole thing that I'm a part of, you know, part of YouTube. And, you know, I'm doing the freelance video editing thanks to me being part of YouTube and connecting with other creators and you know when I moved back to the States they needed help putting together their videos so uh, I was happy to oblige and I wouldn't have been able to get those kinds of opportunities had I not gotten on the YouTube platform so definitely got to uh, you know I don't know say thanks to to that I guess um, but anyway vlog one one uh, was where it all started. You know, I had just gotten a new Zacti camera off of eBay. It was used. The tripod mount was stripped, so I couldn't, like, get a tripod and stand it up and do, like, fixed vlogs. I had to have the camera in my hands pretty much the whole time and find clever workarounds to make it, like, stand up because it was the pistol grip style. It wasn't like a traditional camera, which had a flat surface. So you couldn't just like lay it down without it looking all like cockeyed like that. So I had to get creative with it. And uh, you know, it it got me got me started on this platform, you know, for better or worse. And you know, it's always interesting to go back and look at those old videos and just be like, man, I remember recording at that place and doing that thing and you know, seeing those people and stuff like that, you know, and it just seems like yesterday that I was picking up a camera for the first time and, you know, putting together my first vlog, which wasn't even edited. It was just, it was all one take. And, you know, I didn't start editing vlogs until vlog four when I finally got Sony Vegas. And that's when I started cutting out a lot of stuff and doing location spots and all this other sorts of fun trickery and whatnot. Got me all started on uh, on editing, if anything. So, you know, it's uh, we've definitely come a long way since vlog one, and you know, even even vlog two hundred, which is just a hundred vlogs ago, doesn't seem like much, but you know, that was about what five years ago or so, and you know, it it was a crazy time in my life. What do you got? Interested in Japan. The first place for me is Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. Oh, actually, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, here, let me open up chat here. So, yeah, yeah, MXT87 had a great question here. Um, he's wondering what got me interested in Japan in the first place. For him, it was uh, Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon in the 90s, 2000s. So, um, hold on. It's hard for me to... Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. Um, I'd already talked about this before, but, you know, to answer your question, what got me interested in Japan uh, to begin with was my cousins, actually. They were a military family, and uh, my one cousin got orders out to Yokosuka, Japan. You might have heard of it if you follow my videos. <laughs> Back in the early to mid-90s. And, you know, this is way before the internet or anything like that. So it's not like now where you can 
look up live streams of people walking around Japan trying sushi and all this other crap. You know, the only things I knew about Japan were stuff that I found in like encyclopedias, books, things like that. You know, there wasn't any other resource that I could utilize learning about stuff in Japan, you know, and uh, just stuff that was on TV. But for me, that didn't come until a little later. Um, you know, a lot of stuff that got me interested in Japan was the fact that my cousins were over there and I was really close with them when, when we were kids. And, you know, they would send me stuff back from Japan, you know, like chopsticks, bowls, cups. They'd sent me, uh, like, all the different coins that Japan has. And they'd say, you know, this is 50 yen. It's worth 50 cents in America and stuff like that. And I just think it's so cool because it's so, so different, you know, like American money and so different from the Western, and, uh, you know, later on in the later 90s you know that's when the the anime boom started up and you know my friends you know were into that as well and uh you know i ended up watching more and more anime and uh that's how i really started getting into japan and you know again around the mid 2000 yeah around the mid 2000s that's when i started doing youtube and even before i started making my own videos i was watching guys like Tokyo Kuni and Roger Swan and, uh, you know, friggin' Busan Kevin and uh, friggin' My Argonauts, Japan Channel DCOM, um, all these different. Um, some of them are still around from back then, you know. But. You know, I watched those early videos and, be, and was just thinking, like, man, I wish I could be there because they just seemed like people that I could go to high school with or that I could just, like, hang out with, you know. Not all of them because, you know, some of them were a bit older than me. But uh, there's a lot of them that were around the same age. And it's just like, man, you know, again, I could go to high school with these people. You know, like, why can't I go to Japan? But uh, it was very cost prohibitive and I just wanted to get my bachelor's degree so I could get a work visa and get out there and I mean that's been my goal for a long ass time you know it's it's basically the main reason why I even bother with college to, to be 100% honest with you guys you know obviously having a degree is nice you know because here in the states you know it can supposedly help you get a job you know at least that's how it was at first but now now eh, not so much but uh you know for me at this point you know i wanted to get the degree so i could get a work visa and you know live out in japan and if i decided to move back to the states at least you know hey i'd have a degree so i'd be able to apply for a halfway decent job and not work at mcdonald's all the time any chance to give me a shout out in the video oh yeah shout out to Ruben Martin Vlogs, I guess. talk about. Yeah. Yeah, and that's another thing, man. Because, uh, you know, as far as figuring out what you want to talk about, because it varies from person to person. You know, for me, I really enjoyed the, uh, the you know, Japan vlogging and stuff like that. And I wanted to sort of get myself used to that style. Uh where I was in my hometown so that way by the time I do get out to Japan you know I'd be ready to go <laughs> little did I know um, but you know that's what initially got me into it in the first place and just being able to interact with uh, with people that you know also do videos was another reason why I kept on going at it and uh, you know it's what's kept me going this whole time and you know i'm looking forward to coming back to japan uh, we're looking at next year is the projected date but uh you know i've been in talks with uh, several schools in the tokyo area seeing it you know what my options are and just looking at different things and uh you know we're going to be setting into motion some stuff very soon um, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it for spring semester, so I won't be able to see, like, all the 
cherry blossoms and all that kind of crap. Um, well, maybe like the last little bits of it by the time I get out there. If I get out there when I am expected to. Yeah, right on, dude. Switching to business since my current job is for free condition. Yeah, for sure, you know. Um, and, you know, for me, like, teaching English isn't, like, my life's goal. But I think, if anything, it'll be something interesting to to put on a resume or even just, like, say, you know, I taught English to kids in a foreign country. You know, it's not something a lot of people, especially in the area where I live, can say they did. You know, and even though a lot of expats really look down on English teachers because it's just kind of an easy job for a lot of people out of university and stuff. And, you know, it's it's not the best, but for me, it's just, yeah, for sure, it's a resume builder. And if anything, you know, it's a means to an end. You know, worst case scenario, it's allowing me to live in Japan, giving me some money, and let me do my Japan thing because a lot of people get wrapped up in their jobs, whether it's teaching English or other things. And they, you know, project their, you know, their, they feel like their self-value is based on their job. And, you know, a lot of them try to project their, you know, values onto the, the job, you know, depending on, you know, whether Canada, England, something like that. But you know, how Japan works, you know, you can't just go and and guide and smash and expect people to, to kowtow to you and uh, let you do your thing. You know, you have to follow the system and, you know, do those things. But to me, at the end of the day, if anything, it's a means to an end. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, focus more on my creative endeavors and uh, just kind of go from there. And that's why I want to do freelance video editing a lot more because I feel like that's the uh, the path for me at this this time because uh, it will give me you know the freedom to make stuff wherever I wherever I am you know I don't have to be in Ohio to do it you know I could be in Japan or New York or LA or something <laughs> or even just in the middle of BFE as long as I got internet to upload the finished product and download the raw files i'm good so and plus like doing the freelance video editing stuff you know it can get kind of zen like in a lot of ways you know because you're in your own little environment working on stuff you don't have to worry about people yelling at you or whatever or like looking over your shoulder watching you work like a like a normal job would be and, uh, you know, it's really nice and rewarding to just sit around in my PJs, sipping a coffee or whatever, you know, just chilled out, putting together some videos and, you know, keep the things moving forward from there. So that's why I want to pursue that more. But, uh, you know, that's, you know, a bit more long term, I guess. So, you know, for now... I just want, you know, I really miss the country. I feel like, you know, my main opportunity there. And it's like, it's, you know, I want to go back, you know, experience more of Japan. Because even though I was stationed out there for two years, there's a lot more of Japan to explore than just Yokohama and Tokyo and all that kind of stuff, you know. It's just I want to get out there and, and do things. And also, you know, interact, you know, just meet up and collaborate with uh, with other creatives because there's a lot of, you know, creators based out in the Tokyo area. And, you know, I want to, you know, just talk shop or just have someone to talk to who can relate to this, you know, silly little thing that we do on the Internet. You know, and I think that's extremely healthy because a lot of times, you, t you know, being... A YouTuber can be very isolating, you know, because not a lot of people, like, really know what it is or, you know, aside from maybe just like a silly once in a while sort of thing, you know, it's just, 
the whole question of, oh, how do you make money on YouTube? You know, that whole thing. Like, I was watching a clip from 2016, so it wasn't that long ago. But I was watching a clip from 2016 where the Game Grumps are being interviewed by KTLA about, you know, doing the Let's Play stuff on YouTube. And it was just such, like, old media not getting this whole internet thing and, like, kind of portraying it as this, like, what are the kids into these days? You know, flipping around with the bib de bops and, you know, means big money and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, ugh. I don't know. It just, it seemed so tone deaf, you know, that whole thing. And, uh, you know, they just didn't understand it. This was only, like, two years ago. So, um, but it seemed so tone deaf. But, you know, for me, it's, you know, it's more about creative expression. And, uh, you know, obviously having money to pay the bills definitely helps and allows me to do this more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, again, that was just back in 2016, so that wasn't that long ago. Um, but they just were so out of touch with it. And, uh, you know, being a YouTuber is looked at as, you know, not exactly a viable career option, but just like more of a possibility than it used to be before. Because like being a full-time YouTuber wasn't a thing in the beginning, you know, only a select amount of creators could do that. You know, because they were handpicked by YouTube itself to be part of the original YouTube partnership program, which allowed them to get at money from ads and all that kind of stuff. Um, and now it's widened, which is fine because, you know, as, as the platform grows, that sort of thing happens. And uh, yeah, so, you know, to me, YouTube is about connecting with people and. A lot of these shenanigans and stuff going on with the YouTube algorithm and all this other stuff, you know, don't get me wrong, that sort of thing does bother me from time to time, but ultimately it's just connecting with people, really, you know, and just being able to express myself creatively. So as long as I got a platform that I can do that, you know, even if YouTube doesn't pay me, you know, now there's also more options to make money from doing YouTube videos. It's it's not just AdSense, you know. There's, you know, just having a Patreon or a Ko-Fi or coffee or whatever you pronounce it. And, uh, yeah, just so many more options out there now versus back then. And, you know, like I was saying, even Vlog 200, just 100 vlogs ago, it was like almost five years ago now and you know i remember doing that at the mwr in yukoska because i didn't even have my apartment yet there <laughs> at the time so i had to do all my stuff kind of on the fly from the mwr because it was the only place i could get solid internet at and yeah you know it's we've come a long way baby you know this whole live streaming thing wasn't even a thing until a couple years ago especially not mobile live streaming, you know, was, you could stream like from your desktop for a while, but, uh, you know, just doing this on my phone wasn't even a thing until a couple, until fairly recently, man, I'm, <laughs> the sun is coming in. I'm sorry. I'm trying to, trying to get the skin tones looking all even, but it's like coming in in spots. So it is what it is, but yeah, man. We've definitely come a long way, and I do enjoy doing what I do on the Yetubs. And you know, my goal is to get back out to Japan, network with some creatives, and just you know make some stuff of my own too, because uh, I have a lot of ideas for videos out there and people that I want to collaborate with, you know, to make some of those things happen. And I feel like, you know, I could be more of service to my clients who are all out in that area anyway. You know, whether it's just me being a cameraman or whatever, 
you know, even just me being in the country, you know, I can talk with them more frequently about uh, a lot of projects and stuff that we're working on. So I feel like, you know, if you want to play the game, you got to go where the players are. And there's a lot of players in Tokyo. So, you know, it's <laughs> one of the reasons why I want to go. And, uh, yeah, just enjoy myself out there because, you know, I haven't really enjoyed being in a place since I was last out there in Japan. You know, it's just like being in the States, I never really felt like I fit in. And, uh, you know, I was always just worried about what other people were thinking and stuff like that versus... You know, Japan, I don't have to worry about that sort of thing because, you know, the most they'll think about is, ooh, foreigner. Oh, white guy. <laughs> Where from? Why come Japan? You know, all that stuff. So, yeah. Log 300. Um, I wish I was a bit more energetic. I was debating on getting an iced coffee for this one, but it's already, like, nearly 6 o'clock, so I didn't want to be up all night, you know, because of all the caffeine from the iced coffee. So, in any event, um, some big big news on the horizon. Um, hope, hoping to uh, make some new stuff very soon, get some stuff in order, and, uh, you know, make the move out to Japan next year. So, uh, make some moves very soon, so. Anyway, guys, I think that about does it for this video. Sorry if it's all, like, kind of rambly and random. <laughs> um, just kind of is what it is. But uh, definitely look forward to doing more vlogs soon, doing more tutorial videos once I get Adobe all sorted out as far as, like, getting the new stuff. You know, that's a whole other issue in and of itself. <laughs> Um, but looking forward to getting some new stuff out and uh, things like that. And I definitely want to thank you guys for sticking with me for all these years and through all the different changes and everything like that. Um, it definitely means the world to me. And I, I do want to continue making YouTube videos and being on this platform and interacting with you guys. So in any event, with that said... This is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.